Welcome to the Player Position Podcast, where your story matters and we make it count. Here's your host, Mary Lou Kaser. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Mary Lou Kaser here for another episode of the Player Position Podcast. And today's podcast is going to be slightly different from what I've recorded so far. And that's because this week marks the three-month anniversary of when I first got started podcasting back in early February of this year. And in that time frame, I have had the honor and privilege of having conversations with 12 very wonderful, very different, and truly amazing people. And in today's episode, I wanted to reflect on some of the insights that I've picked up since starting this podcasting journey, as well as some of the things that are facing me right now in my position as particularly a mom. And I think I'm going to start with that because it's first and foremost on my mind. Today is May 29th, 2014. And In about 10, 12 days from now, my first child, my daughter, is going to be graduating from high school. And as far as milestones go in life, this is one of the big ones. And I remember my own graduation from high school, not like it was yesterday, because it doesn't feel like yesterday to me. But honestly, when I think back of how much time has passed Since I graced the halls of my high school, it's really remarkable that I have a child who is at that point in her life and will be heading off to college here in a few months. So my position as a mom isn't going to change from being a mom standpoint, but some of the expectations and the responsibilities of my position as a mom are changing as we speak because she is pretty much done with her academics and is transitioning into her summer and looking at a job and then a couple of trips planned and then it's going to be off to college in September. And so anybody who's listening today who's gone through this understands how how emotional and wonderful and you you sit back and you think about all the different stages that you have experienced of your child's life and thinking that this really does mark the beginning of their adulthood. So my position is definitely in this, this transition and it's given me pause to think about what's next. I still have a son who has some years of high school left. And so I'll get to enjoy him in a way that I haven't before because his sister won't be around. So that in it of itself is making me think about the kinds of things I might do with him and how might I approach my parenting with just him in the house versus having both children. So This is just an interesting experience, and I I wanted to record this in a raw fashion and not spend a lot of time thinking or scripting this out, but just really talking off the top of my head because I've been in this mode for the last few months, but it hasn't really hit me until, honestly, the last couple of weeks as I sat through the last performances of her play, of her concerts, of her choir performances, going to the senior reception at the high school and mingling with other parents and reminiscing about those days in elementary school and middle school and how can it be 18 years have gone by, all those very cliched comments that parents make. But in all fairness, I'm really, really excited about this next chapter because not only is she going to be going into her next chapter and blossoming in new ways, but I get to have a chance to really get to know my son in a different way and have some time to pursue things that are important to me that, again, all parents have to, at some point, sacrifice certain things because our main position is making sure things are going right for our kids. That's a pretty interesting, it's an interesting place that I find myself in, and I wanted to share that. The other big piece of today's episode that I wanted to dive into a bit is what I have picked up about people since I started this journey and talking with such a variety of individuals. And that was really my goal when I set out to do this podcast is I was interested in people who exemplify mastery and do not make excuses for who they are or what they do. And I wanted to use the questions that I ask each week as my framework to see what kinds of common threads 
hold all of us together. And there's a couple that really stood out to me. The first big one is that no person gets to a place of mastery without making significant sacrifices along the way. There has to be something that is given up in order to get what it is a person really wants. And while that is common wisdom, I think it's validating to hear it from a real wide variety of people. I've talked to former high school teacher. I've talked to a professional fly fisherman. I've talked to a professional flight attendant. I've talked to an online business marketing maven. I've talked to a personal historian and the list goes on from there. And on schedule for future episodes, I have authors, I have other business people, I have trades people. So that's one of the most interesting insights that's come out for me is that no matter what a person chooses to do, there has to be a sacrifice in order to achieve greatness. It just, there is no other way to get to that level unless you make a decision and give up something in order to get what you want. Another big insight has been that once you figure out what it is that you truly love and want to do, there's no stopping people. That to me is so encouraging and such a testament to the power and strength of the human spirit. I think that our culture does a really good job of trying to suppress people and keep people down through the messaging that comes out. Every advertisement has an undercurrent of you're not good enough unless you're using this product or you're broken and you need to be fixed. That's a pervasive message that's in our culture. And every single one of my guests has gone against that message in order to fulfill what was most important to them in terms of giving back to the world through what it is they do. And that brings me to my third and perhaps most important insight. And that is in order for us to truly make a difference in this life, we need to be doing what we're best at. We need to be playing our position. Whatever it takes for that to happen, you need to figure that out. If you currently aren't in a place where you are playing your position, where you're feeling stuck or you're feeling like you're out of alignment or you're feeling like the world is against you, take some time and really have a brutal conversation with yourself and be totally honest But what is it that you're doing right now that is not fulfilling you? And start making small decisions that will lead you so that you can play the position that's going to bring you the most joy, the most satisfaction, and in turn, make the world a better place. In the introduction to this podcast, my very first one, I shared that very intimate detail about my own life and how I was out of position for a long time. Because I was letting all those voices tell me, you need to be doing something else. And I was miserable, and in turn, I was making other people miserable. Because I wasn't bringing the best of me to the world every day. What the Player Position Podcast has affirmed for me, even more so, is how important it is for me to continue on my own journey of being an entrepreneur, of helping people tell their stories, of putting out into the world the message that... There is a position for you. You can play it. You will be amazing at it, but this is what it's going to take for you to get there. And every single one of my guests has shared in their own way that exact blueprint that they've gone through. Now, for some, it happened at a young age, and for others, it took a little bit longer. But isn't it better to get to that position and really fall into it and know that your home, that you feel your feet are on the ground and you are just in your element Better late than never. And if you think about it, a lot of some of our greatest innovators and artists and politicians and writers and authors and musicians came to those places later in life. It's not very often that we see the young doing these amazing, great things. I'm not saying that young people don't do amazing, great things. I'm saying that the ones that really rise above the pressure and the messaging to play it safe and buy into the peer pressure and do what 
adults in their life are telling them to do rather than listening to that voice inside and, and saying, you know what, this is who I am and I don't care. I'm going for it. And when we do see that, that's when we, that's when we sit up and notice. And that's usually what we call a prodigy. One of my intentions with this podcast was to be inspirational and I want to continue that journey. Every single one of my guests has inspired me. And if it's been inspiring to you, please let me know, write a review and let me know that. Send me an email, go to my website, marylukaser.com. There's a contact form. You can get in touch with me. Also, if you or someone you know has an amazing story and would like to be a guest on this podcast, Again, MaryLouKaser.com. If you just go to my site in the right-hand bar, there's a bit bright blue box with a yellow link that says, I know someone. Click on that link, and there's a short application form. You can just nominate yourself or somebody that you know that you think would be a great guest, and I can get the ball rolling on my end to bring those people onto the show because I'm getting amazing feedback from the people who are listening, and I want to continue putting out into the universe these incredible stories of struggle and triumph and figuring it out because that's how we learn. I know that's how I learn. My favorite podcast, in all fairness, my favorite podcast every single day shares a story of somebody who was trying to figure out how they could do what they loved in business. It's it's an entrepreneurial podcast, and it is incredible. It's by John Lee Dumas, and if you have not listened to Entrepreneur on Fire and you yourself are an entrepreneur or thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, go download that podcast right now. It is terrific. And he's been an inspiration to me, as have other podcast hosts that I listen to and follow. And I encourage you to... Continue on your journey of discovery. If you're playing your position right now, congratulations. Keep doing it. The world needs you. Like I said earlier, if you're in a place where you're feeling stuck or not really sure what direction to go, there is a way that you can get to the field in the right position so that every day when you wake up, you know you're going out and giving the world your best. So, Don't lose faith. Keep going. Keep thinking about what it is you really, really want in this life. Because I'll tell you, it goes fast. And the fact that my daughter is graduating is a very immediate reminder of how fast time goes. There's a great saying that says the days are long, but the years are short. And boy, I'll tell you, as a parent, that phrase could not be more true. So I look forward to My next set of guests, which I'm calling my summer set, because here we are at the end of May, will be starting in June, and can't wait to share more of their amazing stories with you. And again, please let me know what you think of the podcast, and if you've got someone in mind or you yourself would like to be a guest on my show, love to hear from you. Head on over to MaryLouKaser.com and take it from there. Remember, today, as every day is, it's a great day for you to go out there and play your position See you next time. Thanks for listening to the Play Your Position podcast, where your story matters and we make it count at MaryLouKaser.com.